in Taftonboro when I interviewed Bill Stockman, his recollections of some of the early days of getting the spiderweb guidance going and some of his experiences. Thank you. Um, I guess I began working at Spiderweb Gardens in, the, in 1960, 1961, the early 1960s, as a 10-year-old, 11, 12-year-old, coming up from the Tuckerville Central School, as the oldest grandchild of Roger and Bernice Williams. Um, after schools, in the afternoons, I used to walk up and help mostly um, moving plant material around, uh, transferring wooden, little wooden flats of seedlings out into coal frames. Um, helping in any way I could. I continued to work part-time with Spiderweb Gardens through, through um, elementary school and high school, which would have been 1960, 68. Um, upon graduating at Kingswood Regional High School in 1968, I was accepted or went to the Thompson School of Applied Science at UNH for a two-year program in greenhouse management and transferred for the four-year program in plant science at UNH. So I was down in Durham from 1968 through 1973. I remember the early days, and, and even after I took over Spiderweb Gardens in 1973, my grandparents still continued to work. Um, my grandfather would do most of the seeding in the little seed houses out front, continued to do the seeding for a number of years until I found I would work into the perennial seeding and eventually took it over as it got to be a little bit too much. But he, he continued to do a lot of the seeding. Uh, my grandmother continued to do a lot of transplanting. Um, as long as she could possibly transplant. So they were very, both very active um, and continued to work. Um, so when did you take over the full operation of the greenhouse? In, in, in 1973. 1973. Right. Um, I leased from 73. We worked it out, out a three-year agreement. Probably after the end of that three years, I should have approached them for the purchase and sale. And it was 1980 before I worked out a purchase and sale agreement. Mm -hmm. And... Um, then made a, made a 20 year commitment to my grandparents or, or their estate, which I'm still working on, will be complete in the year 2000. Um, well, what, what did you think about uh, in those days? Did you, you really wanted to get in the greenhouse business and this was your first choice? Or? Um, I guess when I was first uh, working with him earlier on, I had the, had the idea in high school that I wanted to study forestry maybe become a forester, perhaps thinking of following in his tracks from that angle. Um, where I wasn't accepted in, in the forestry schools, uh, was, was accepted at the Thompson School of Applied Science, um, and, and did, did go that route. Um, I think I've made out very well at the Thompson School, a two-year program, because I had all the practical experience from working here, and it was education, a practical education in the exact area that I had kind of been pre-trained for, and it was the first time in all my schooling that, that school seemed to be uh, easy, interesting. Um, I don't know if easy was the word, but it was something I was really uh, into, and I, and I kind of excelled at it, so I continued at that from then on. So it didn't take me long after I started at UNH to decide what direction I was heading in. Um, so you'd had, a, you'd had a lot of uh, time working here at the greenhouse when you're going to school, right? That's, that's correct, yeah. right after school and weekends. And right. So you pretty well knew what you wanted to do. Yeah. My grandparents ran the business. Um, it was a seasonal thing more for them. He, my grandfather was a forester and still still practiced forestry all the way through. And he, he used to run the um, start, start the greenhouses the 1st of February and be pretty well done um, by the 4th of July. He'd have a few other plant sales and a few things going in the, in the fall of the year, but it was a seasonal business for them, and, and then he would practice his forestry work, or, or, or go off and do forestry work mid-summer on and through the fall and early part of the winter. Maybe um, this would be a good time for you to go back and tell us how your grandfather st come to st start the, uh, the greenhouse, where, what he was doing before this. and, and uh, he, he was a forester, uh, my grandfather was a forest, uh, a forester, a UNH graduate. Um, his first job was with Brown Paper Company in Berlin. Uh, he spent a lot of his time cruising, as I understand it, cruising um, the different acreage, measuring, to try to determine the volume of timber on all the different acreage. Uh, he was also a licensed land surveyor, so he did a lot of land surveying for different people, early, early developers. Even later when he came down in this area, he did a lot of surveying. 
on the land subdivision. I believe it was a subdivider or, or a, like, like the subdividers are today. He was tracking out larger acreage and, and helping find property lines more than anything back then. And the last end of the Brown Paper Company work um, in the uh, 20, late 20s and early 30s, he was managing the forest nursery on Lake Umbegog for the Brown Paper Company, and they raised a lot of uh, 12 to 18 acres of little forest seedlings, very concentrated little seedling operation. Uh, when my mother was the oldest of his children, of his six children, um, she was, when she was six or eight or ten, up there, uh, it became without education in the backwoods. They, they, I think they felt the need of uh, getting her into a school system and getting the other children into a school system. Um, with the hurricane of 1938 and all the timber that was blown down in the lakes region, all that timber had to be measured and scaled um, so that it could be de determined the market price because the government stepped in so the price wouldn't be depressed. All that had to be measured and, and then was put into the lakes. My grandfather was had a lot of work to do in that area down here at that point too. So it was an ideal time to move back to uh, Melbourne Village or, or to buy the farm here and, and move in back to Senator Tuftonboro raise his family here. Uh, in the very beginning, he started out with a two little front, uh, one, with one little glass house, with two little glass greenhouses out by the front row. They were sash greenhouses. They had movable sash, three foot by six foot, that slid up and down. They were bought second hand from the Ameses, not very far away, and relocated and put up. Uh, the little shop in 1939 or 1940, the little shop that presently holds our sign out by the road was put in as their original garden center. Um, in the 40s, um, 1940 through, through about 1950, um, they built the additional three little glass greenhouses that are gone now that set behind these first two houses and they had it about 16 different coal frames. Um, in 1956, he built the little first little plastic greenhouse, one of the earlier ones in the state. Um, my Uncle Bill Roger Williams helped him build that the same year he was married. We still use that little plastic house. I, I germinate the seed in that one now. A year or two later, probably about 1958, 59, they built the little glass greenhouse with a glass greenhouse behind that and a little boiler room between it. Um, in the fall of 1968, uh, uh, in 1968, 67, I think we put up our first more or less modern plastic greenhouse, what I call house number five now. And that was a double layered plastic with air inflation uh, between it. The current garden center that we have now is also built in about 1968, um, 68, 69, or about the time I was uh, just had made a commitment to start studying plant science. So they were trying to expand the business, I think, in anticipation that I would come back here if the truth was known. Okay. And, and it, basically did work. <laughs> um, in, uh, I took over, as I mentioned earlier, in 1973. Um, in 1976, I put up the, the large greenhouse behind the shop, 32 foot by 100 foot. That was our first larger house. And um, I'm not sure the exact year, probably about 1980, I put up house number six now, and about 80, mid, mid 80s, 84, somewhere in there, we took the two little glass houses down in the front and also put another house in. So we've been constantly changing, taking taking down the little, little glass greenhouses and putting in plastic houses, which um, I don't think image-wise or aesthetically-wise look quite as neat, but they're far more efficient, or, or, they're, or they've been, been more efficient than the Little glass greenhouses we basically just outgrew. Uh, in that study I did, I took a map and I pinpointed, sent a top to her own, and drew a 50 mile circle. It showed me right off quick that we probably don't service a, service a 50 mile radius, but when my grandfather first started out, he basically serviced everybody on the east side of Lake Winnipesaukee from um, Moulton Borough, holding this sandwich down, down the east side of the lake to Wolf Borough and, and down maybe into Alton. There were very few garden centers in the business back in those days. Um, he first grew some plants. He, he'd load them into a, a station wagon and actually took plants to sandwich. He went out on the road with plants, 
to um, convince people that he had plants and so forth. And that, left, that was very short-lived, and it didn't take long at all before he stayed right here, and he grew everything here, and people came to him here. But in some of those resort in America, have, have had the, our clientele of people around the lake and everything is still very much the same, I feel. Uh, the truth is known, we cater to the, the summer tourists that, that come up later on and, and fix their, want to fix their property up yeah. and, and come and so forth. Well, you've been able to expand quite a bit since, since you took over, and uh, so what's what's the secret anyway? <laughs> Just oh, a lot yeah. of hard work. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I think I think that's. Well, you have to know. Work. You have to know right. your customers. And well, I, I had I had excellent instructors. That's for sure. My grandfather always kept excellent records. His seed and production records, um, the seeding records. That I'm in the other room. I can bring them out. But I've got his seeding records from all from all the way back to 1938, mm -hmm. and they're still set up in the same books, and I'm still following almost the same same format. Really? Um, the numbers have changed. We've increased in in volume, yes, and we've increased in, in plant varieties maybe compared to what he had back in the old days. But he was he was pretty um pretty good at trying everything even back then, way back then. Mm -hmm. It really amazes me sometimes to see some of the same things on um, the heat that we're growing today. Or uh, things have gone through cycles, been popular for one year and for a few years and then fallen off and ten years later they come right back in popularity again. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what he did way back then, um, we're still doing today. Things have changed a little. The riches are going in the Yeah, right straight ahead of the high hill. That's where the golf course is. Yeah, yeah. And if you get up on the top of that, that last piece of snow up on top is leveled off. Okay, what is this now, Bill? This is a Bonnie Dune golf course. Uh huh. And this was a bulletin, though they had it. It was probably out on the on the field, and they had it. There was with a clubhouse set, and 1899. keep thinking in the back of my head I'd like to put this thing all back together or lay out the courses again and, <laughs> and try to lay this thing out for the hundredth year or for 1999 yeah. but I, <laughs> I don't know that that's possible <laughs> a lot of work to it yeah yeah Navigating and cutting and doing cuttings here and there and Uncle Bill will do the dozer work. He's a good man. You want that? He'll be real good on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he spent a lot of time on some of those. Right. That's what we got. That's what we got. That's what we got.